Time now for the Jerry Sin Show, recorded at Edgar Family Restaurant in Edgar, and sponsored by Security Health Plan. Security Health Plan, promises kept plain and simple. Visit securityhealth.org today. Welcome to the Jerry Sin Show. I'm your host, Jason Zaleski, here at Edgar Family Restaurant on uh, Edgar's lovely north side. Uh, here visiting with uh, Coach Sins again today. Uh, Coach, uh, let's first start. You missed your just your second ever game from the sidelines. Of course, you had a good reason. We'll talk about that later on uh, during our, our talk here today. Uh, but what you missed was, was 42 nothing uh, over at, at Rochel. Um, we'll, we'll go to the end of the game first. Uh, sometimes in those games that are one-sided, uh, there's an advantage to that. So at one, hopefully injury-free. Uh, you want to stay healthy in those types of games. Uh, but players that will be featured in 2023 in 2024 get to have some playing time. So how do you and the coaches take advantage of situations like that and let those let the future kids come in and get some work on a Friday night? Oh, yeah, you're completely uh, correct there. And we've tried to do that pretty much all the time for years and years. If you're fortunate enough to get ahead, then you can keep your starters healthy. Uh, that's why we very seldom have any starters with gaudy statistics because they, they don't get many opportunities to build those kinds of, uh, of stats. And of course, the young guys get playing time, they, they stay interested, they stay motivated and involved, and, and of course, yeah, and then the next year they have some varsity experience from those situations. Um, yeah, we were ahead 35 you know, to nothing, I believe, at halftime. Mm -hmm. So I I'm, I'm, wasn't there to witness it for sure, but I'm reasonably sure that, yeah, most of our JVs got to play probably pretty much the second half. Yeah, and, and a big advantage for that because there's a, there's a huge step up from practice during the week to the lights are on, the people are in the stands and all that. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's some pressure in that, especially for a freshman or a sophomore. So to, get, to feel that pressure early on in their career helps them uh, definitely later on. Uh, you hopped on an airplane on Wednesday. Uh, game was on Friday, um, so coming into into Wednesday, what what was your message to the team? How did how did you handle uh, communicating with them and, and still helping them to get ready for that game on Friday night? Yeah, I, I had let them know on Sunday when we had, had the film session uh, following the Pacelli game, where we were looking at Pacelli and then watching Raj Holt that I would not be there the following Friday, and and why I would not be there. Um, and of course, many of our kids <clears throat> are at least aware of my grandson because he's, he's kind of one of the top rated players in the state of California. So they've seen him on film and so on. And I told him, well, I've never seen him play a game. And um, I think this is the best week of the year maybe to do it. They're playing their cross -time, cross town rivals, so it'll be a big game. And uh, so yeah, I, I left early on Wednesday morning. I had completed practice plans for Wednesday and Thursday and, and left them with one of the assistant coaches to put up and so on. We already had the defensive game plan in, the offensive play script. We were just, uh, we had talked about, spread the ball around, let everybody, you know, get involved yeah. <laughs> and so on. So, I, and of course it, it worked out pretty well that way. Um, Fortunately, we got a JV game in with them on Monday too down there, so that that was good. So the kids got to play a little more, and some of the younger guys got to play. But um, everything worked out well, uh, other than the weather in California, which was a mess. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell everybody how that all went uh, at the end of the show, because I think that's it's an interesting story. It's something that we don't hear around here. Uh, here, here we shovel snow, but uh, that's that, and that's kind of our our big complaint uh, year round uh, in this area of the country, anyway. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, no big deal this Friday. Just got the state uh, defending state champs coming in uh, to play football. Uh, now you're no stranger to big games and, uh, and over the years and games at your place or on the road. Uh, we can go through the whole history of them. And, um, but you know, this is a pretty big game and Colby in conference now. Uh, so it's a conference game on top of it. Uh, how do you go about talking to your guys about, about that? You know, they're, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the state champs uh, coming in and and how do you keep everybody level and just focus on Edgar Wildcats football? Well, yeah, we, we started, of course, right away on Sunday night. Um, yeah, we had film at uh, 5 o'clock on Sunday night, and I got home at about 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon after changing my flight plans because of the game getting switched. But 
Yeah, we began talking about it immediately. And of course, we look at film and um, try to explain to him that no, it will not be a game like the last two weeks have been. Um, right. It'll be a game more similar to the Stratford game, which was our second game of the year, which was more of a defensive battle. And uh, fortunately, we came out you know, on top of that one, but it, but it was a good, hard-hitting game from start to finish. And of course, the kids remember, you know, playing at Colby last year. We have quite a few guys back that actually played at varsity last year. So uh, they're certainly aware of the fact that the game is, is going to be, in, you know, hard fought from start to finish. And the practice uh, routine has been good this week. The uh, focus has been good. So um, I think we're ready to probably play well. Uh, Jim Hagan, uh, coach of the Colby Hornets, um, has had a lot of success over there. Uh, what what do you know about uh, about Jim? Uh, what's your relationship or your history with Coach Hagan? Well, I haven't met him all that much because they've only been in the conference a couple of years now. And of course, the first year was 2020 where we had the, the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. um, we used to play Colby a little more years ago, um, and he, he was on the staff at that time too. But um, yeah, I, I went and listened to him talk at the clinic in Madison last year. He spoke a while, and then his O&D coordinator spoke and so on. So we're, we're somewhat familiar with them. Um, we know the style you know, that, that they play. They've gotten a little more wide open now too. They, they use many for, more formations and offenses than they used to. Uh, they, they just play hard nose defense. They always have a good kicking game. They always have a good punter and a good kicker. So uh, they do a lot of the same kinds of things that, that we try to do. And, uh, and so it'll be, a, it'll be a tough battle. You mentioned uh, some similarities or at least some comparisons between uh, the game uh, that you hosted against Stratford and now Colby. Uh, so Cole or Kilty running back for Stratford, uh, kind of a, a big bruiser, a little younger guy, but a bigger bruiser. Now you got Caden Healy, uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen on film, uh, almost 500 yards rushing. Um, what did that game against Stratford do specifically defensive wise to help your kids understand that here's another good running back that's coming in here this week? Well, yeah, Healy is a different type of a runner. He's more of a slasher and a speed guy. Where Kilty was more of a, a power guy, even though he, you know, it had some finesse too. Um, but yeah, it's it's a different situation. Um, their blocking schemes, of course, are different too. The formations are similar. Uh, certainly, they know because they know from last year. You know, when we played him, that he, he scored a touchdown or two in a game last year. Last year, he played a little bit different position than he's playing now. He was more there wing reverse guy where now he's like they're featured back. But um, yeah, they're, they're certainly aware of it. Um, Lopez is another, mm -hmm. you know, good runner for him. Um, yeah, they have a, a little guy, um, well, his name is Rude. Yeah, Rude yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's a quick shifty little guy that is now doing the things that uh, Healy was doing more last year. And so once again, uh, yeah, the kids are aware that yeah, he, he can break one if you if you don't stay awake and so on. Quarterback has a pretty good arm, throws the ball pretty well too. So yeah, they have a good, you know, varied offensive attack and you can't really focus too much on one thing or somebody else will beat you. Uh, homecoming week, on yes. top of everything else uh, that's going on. Um, for me, homecoming was more about the other, uh, the, the, the school in general and, and, the, and the community and the town. Uh, but still, there's a chance that uh, some of the guys could uh, lose some focus, get wrapped up in the homecoming activities, make sure they've got a date for the dance and all those kind of things. And um, how do you keep their heads straight at homecoming week? Yeah, we started talking about that right away on Sunday. And of course, we re-emphasize it every day that, you know, have fun in the homecoming activities, but don't put too much time, effort, and, and you know, energy into that. Um, you save as much as you can for the game, and then you can celebrate it, uh, on Saturday or whatever after the game. So yeah, we, we're always aware of that situation, and, and hope that uh, that the guys are listening when we tell them that. Uh, Conference-wise, um, everybody has played two conference games here so far: uh, Abbotsford, Auburndale, Colby, Edgar, all two and zero in conference. So obviously, the winner on Friday night uh, moves to three and zero with. With there being so many teams at the top right now, um, you may not have room for a loss. Um, so what, what's kind of your, out, your outlook on that when we're looking towards a conference championship, which is certainly one of the goals uh, that's on your list, and so many teams performing really well this year, um, you know, a loss would be 
not, not good for that goal. Well, exactly. Uh, even though, of course, yeah, as you mentioned, we have yeah we have Colby this week. Well, next week we got Abby, who's also undefeated, and who's had some big wins. And about a week after that or two, we got Auburndale, who's in in the same boat. So mm -hmm. we can't get too up or too down, you know, no matter what happens, because uh, we all have to play each other. Obviously, four undefeated teams. Well, none of us have played each other yet, so there, there's going to be a lot of big games in the next two or three weeks. There will be some losses to be assigned, okay. and, uh, and, and all that. But obviously, much much better outcome with the win. Uh, you, you begin to kind of chase after that that goal. It becomes a little more real, and uh, you know, week by week. Um, I, I look at the score. Uh, Colby, uh, 48-8 over Loyal. Uh, Loyal's had had some issues this year. Um, but I, I look at that eight, that eight, uh, that touchdown came in the fourth quarter. Um, I, I wasn't at the game, so I can't say, but I can certainly uh, tell you that you're a you're a good motivator. Coaches are good motivators. Uh, I, did Coach Hagen let well, uh, not let right? But was he okay with loyal scoring? Because now we can we've got some extra ammo to use at practice. We can kind of ramp up our guys. Did you ever do something like that where you were okay maybe with somebody scoring in a blowout? That way you could. Really, you'd have one more thing to lean into your players about that next week. Well, we we used to really focus on shutouts all the time. Uh, I mean, we had numerous years where not not very distant either. I think in 2017 we shut out 10 of the first 11 games we played, and so mm -hmm. we've had those types of years. Um, but now we don't really focus on that much anymore. Because uh, we more focus on wanting to let the young guys get activity because the games that the younger love are, are not guaranteed anymore. It's several teams they don't have freshman teams or they don't have JV teams. So if you want your young guys playing, you pretty much have to let them play in the fourth quarter of varsity games if the game has kind of been decided. And uh, and in a lot of cases, the opponent. It, um, uh, not happy being down, you know, 35 or 42 to nothing. They kind of uh, put a licking on your young guys, but um, we 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 don't we really, really say much about that anymore. We're just happy that we get the young guys in the game, and uh, they know Stratford game, Colby game, you know, Armadale game, Abbey game. Hey, it's going to be a different story. You're going to have to be ready to go for four quarters. Yeah, I, I would fully expect this yeah. to be a to be a four quarter game uh, on Friday, uh, just like it was. Uh, against Stratford. Uh, with that being said, okay, so uh, we got the defending champs coming to town. It's homecoming week. Uh, there's always a big crowd at your games anyway. Now this will be standing room only. There's no doubt about that because all of Colby will uh, will come down uh, Highway 29 and, 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 and be right here. Um, there are uh, people that will put out uh, their chairs and their blankets. They reserve seats. You ever had anybody ask you, hey coach, if I give you my blanket, can you put that over there for me? Was that Would that be something you would do to help somebody out? No, I've never had that. <laughs> we used to have best seats in the house. We still have them. We just don't use them anymore. Mm. But, but we have four cushion chairs, you know, that were tied together. We put right up in front of the press those, box. Yeah. Yeah. And we used to give those away to selected people. Usually it was parents of the senior players. But, well, we don't do that anymore because we had complaints about other people wanting no <laughs> Yeah, <us>. right. <laughs> There were four nice seats. <laughs> they were. <laughs> uh, yeah, seats will be at a, at a premium, um, so get there early. I know uh, against Stratford, I was 3.30. I, I probably came in uh, to the stadium, and there were already people uh, with their seats, their stadium chairs, and their blankets out there. So some people get a big jump start on it. Uh, feel free to. It, it's um, for, for fans. Now, outside of the team, it, 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 it's really a big party in Edgar on, on Friday night. So you got the fires off in the end zone, and the... They, uh, all the different stuff happening. Uh, so get down there early. Uh, obviously a big game uh, for for both teams, and just a big game in the area. We don't uh, don't often see four quarter games anymore. Uh, right. you know, a lot of, a lot of time, and that, that goes across the board, uh, all all divisions and levels. Uh, okay, so uh, you headed on a plane on Wednesday. You went out to a place called Temecula, California, where it was about 50 degrees hotter there than it is here today. Uh, and you had all kinds of experiences out there. You told me about a, a hurricane and fires and air quality and uh, mudslides and, and all that. But yet you got to see a football game uh, in the middle of it. So tell us a little bit about the football game. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a great game. Uh, Temecula Valley versus Chaparral, uh, both from Temecula Valley. Each school of about 3,500 students. Big schools. And, and um, of course, everyone has turf fields and big stadiums and so on. Um, it was at Chaparral, but about the same distance from my son's house to either his field or Chaparral's field. And so it did, that didn't make any difference. But we did see all the weather conditions. Um, first, it was high heat alert. And then it became air quality and high heat. And then it became air quality, high heat, and, and gale force winds with the hurricane coming. And then it became torrential rains. And then it became mudslides. And so all these things were occurring at the same time. The game got postponed from Friday night to Saturday night, JV game. and. Freshman game on Thursday both got postponed too, and that was because of air quality. That was before the rain hit, which hit on Friday. And so we had to change our flight, you know, back it up a day, which we did, and got to see the game. And it ended up 24 to 20 right to the end, the final play. Now, fortunately, my grandson's team won, so they were all, you know, happy and fired up. And uh, it, was, it was a good trip. Yeah, well, it sounds like it. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there are often choices in life, and uh, sometimes you, you make the best choice. And uh, you, it turned out on a, you always like your, your team to win. Now around here, uh, a good weekend in the fall is a Wildcats win on Friday night, a Badgers win on Saturday, and a Packers win on Sunday. But we go back while you were gone. We had the Wildcats win on Friday. Everything else, Coach, fell apart while you were gone. How do you explain that? I was a little shocked. I was watching the Badgers game on TV before, uh, you know, their game on Saturday night. I, I, I was a little surprised by that one. Um, the Packer game, well, they've had a history of not playing the best in the first game. So that one wasn't quite as big of a surprise, but um, hopefully we all get it straightened out this weekend. <laughs> well, again, that's the goal. All right, Wildcats win on Friday, Badgers win on Saturday, Packers win on Sunday. That makes everybody in uh, in this part of Marathon County pretty happy anyway. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. So good. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Coach and I are going to have a little bit of lunch, and uh, and then we will see you at Football Edgar, 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, Pre-game show on Zaleski Sports at 6.50. Tom King on the play-by-play. -play. But again, get down to the stadium. Uh, it will be a, a game you will not want to miss. Uh, thanks again, Coach. And, Thank you very uh, much, Steve. Yeah, good luck on Friday night. Thank you. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap it up for here. Uh, big thanks to uh, Edgar Family Restaurant for hosting us and our show sponsor, Security Health Plan. Promises kept plain and simple. We'll see you again next week. You know better Four. when you see it. But sometimes, it's a little harder to tell what better looks like. And you could use a little help. Thanks, Mom. Security Health Plan. Everything you need in a health plan. Everything you'd expect from a good neighbor.